Welcome to The Medical Conspiracy with Dr. Carpenter. Good afternoon and welcome back. We are here again with you and we would like to cover the things I didn't get around to cover last week, something that I started and there were other points. And they're all intended to tell you what is going on out there so you are aware of it and plus the things that have been happening this week. But before we do that, we're going to have Randy give you station identification. That's about all he can do today. Mm. He, he is not in good condition. He's, uh, wow. He had to go to the dentist, and you know how what a nightmare that is. And so he's not doing well at all. He can't eat. He's feeling weak, and the pain medication are uh, making a mess out of him. So he'll do a station ID, and probably that's about it. Yeah, okay. Big job on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hello, everybody. You're listening to OrionTalkRadio.com and Micro1650.com in Tonawanda, New York. Uh, and uh, hello to everyone listening on Spreaker.com, uh, everyone on TalkSuperStation.com, uh, Shoutcast.com, and, of course, everybody listening with the TuneIn app. Okay. And you know the... Uh comes from the fact that he's in pain. <laughs> oh. I, I bet it even hurts laughing. Well, you know, the the pain medication does a number on the brain, too, you know. Yeah, it just, uh, it's a mess. Okay, oh. just can't win for losing here. But anyway. Makes me kind so, of nauseous, too. Well, that's because you haven't been eating enough, and that makes you <laughs> nauseous. So, you know, do you have your coffee there? Of course. The, su- the survival kit. <laughs> of course. That survival oh. kit. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. So, getting back into the uh, center of things. I believe that last week I stopped introducing the discussion of Xarelto, new drug. Uh, the generic name is ridiculous. It's Rivaroxalan. Zabam. Zabam Mumab. Uh, <laughs> you know the one of those Muma, Bima, Bimola, another one of those. Yeah. Okay. Crazy. So, it's advertised on TV. I saw it. I think it's just the only channel I watch is the one the channel. Uh, to find out what's the weather going to be on Mars this week. <laughs> anyway, I heard it on the on the on the uh, on one of the commercial and basically they introduce you oh, this is such a great thing and you don't have to take coumadin anymore and all the pro- problem with coumadin yeah i told you that many times before coumadin is rat poison but they're saying zarelto is so much better is the newest thing is just a, a miracle uh and then of course they say something about side effects, but I investigated the issue a lot further. And they say this great alternative to rat poison may cause hives, which is normal. Basically, make difficulty in breathing, a swelling of the face, lips, and tongue. You know, normally what drugs do. And if you read through it, the, the severe bruising, uh, bleeding, from even from injection site, all the things that Coumadin does, the same thing. The surge, wonder alternative to Coumadin does exactly the same thing because it thins the blood too much, so it causes the same problem that Coumadin does. However, however, there is one great advantage of using Zarelto. Because in addition to all the side effect of coumadin and the normal muscle weakness that comes with coumadin too, with Xarelto you have the advantage that you can have loss of movement in any part of the body. Cool. Okay, cool. That's the advantage of a coumadin. Well, then you don't move, so I guess you hopefully won't bleed. <laughs> You're a better patient. I know. You're a better patient if you don't move. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, but these are our patients, so, you know, you cannot even... Can you believe this? It's unbelievable. And I'm laughing, but it's really a very serious matter. It's a new drug. It's more expensive. Uh, there is no warfarin. Uh, because warfarin is... Coumadin is a brand name, but there is also warfarin that is generic. Well, this doesn't have a, really a generic product. as a generic name, not a generic product yet. It probably just came out, just approved. I don't know, but it's worse in Coumadin. Great. That's really a very miracle, miraculous progress in medication. So my advice to you, if if somebody proposes to you Zarelto, just say no, okay? And keep in mind that the doctor have this attitude. They got the uh, salesman going to them and telling them, there it is, this is so great. No, there aren't any side effects, so they're mine are very rare. So when you say, hey, I heard about the side effects, it's doctor, oh, I haven't heard of any of them. No, it's fine. Yeah. So be on alert. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about last week I didn't get around was that there is an article that discusses that uh, using stem cell transplantation stops Crohn's disease. Now, personally, I think that stem cell might do some good. And so I don't have this thing about, oh, what's the origin of the, the stem cell? Where did they come from? Oh, no, we can't use them. That's horror. No, the horror is the fact that a stem cell transplantation is extremely dangerous, just like uh, uh, transplant for uh, bone marrow. So it's extremely dangerous, and so it might in the end solve maybe Crohn disease, but the danger is it worth it? Mm, questionable, very questionable. So keep that in mind when they tell you this is the greatest, newest thing, is it? Or it's just the effort. I mean, the stem cell transplant, transplantation can do some good, but you have to keep in mind that the risk involved, just like with bone marrow transplant. Okay. Now, another article that I found really interesting, and it fits from what I heard from patient. This article discusses, the, and they're all from Medscape, so I cannot email it to any of you. It says that hospital uh, people that are already in the hospital if during their hospital stay get a stroke they really receive worse care than a patient that has a stroke somewhere else okay so basically <laughs> and i'm not kidding this article say try to have your stroke somewhere else not in the hospital <laughs> dr carpenter <laughs> you, what you're saying is when you're in the environment where they should be able to do something immediately to remedy the situation, you're better off if you have a stroke at home. Yeah, you get more attention and faster attention if you have it at home that you have it when you're already there. Why is that? Because once they have, and I have heard it from a lot of patients, they're really not taken care of when they are in the hospital. They're admitted to the hospital. They got the patient. They got the business. They got... Uh, the money is coming in. You pay attention to them and you say, oh, that's ridiculous. No, it's not. It's absolute true. They don't pay sufficient attention and a lot of bad things happen to patients that are in the hospital already. So if an ambulance comes screaming in to the emergency entrance... Well, then you get attention. The they're on the case right there. Yes. Unbelievable. So I have a stroke. If you're going to have a stroke... Manage to have, like you could control it. <laughs> Manage it to have it not at the hospital. And I think the hospital environment is one that will give you a stroke anyway with all the junk they give you. But anyway, yeah, it's unbelievable what what is going on. It's unreal, and people need to pay attention to all these things. There are so many details that tell you the same story. And people are just not listening. They run to the hospital. They run to doctors when they have a problem. There is another uh, national loan screening trials. It's uh, another organization. Okay. Screening trials, they have been found uh, that instead of using x-ray for screening for, uh, for um, lung cancer, well, I guess lung problem, but lung cancer mostly. Uh, instead of using x-ray, 
using low dose. Now, this is low dose, so you shouldn't worry about CT scan, computer tomography means CT scan. Using low dose CT scan, it's a far superior method of screening from lung cancer. Now, okay, that could be. Uh, it's radiation either way, but um, it could be. But then, reading through the article, what they say, hey, listen to this, despite the high false positive rate, there are few subsequent follow-up diagnostic procedures that are performed. Huh? My question is, what are you saying? They are the high rate of false positive, I mean, it's a mistake, but there are less follow-up drastic diagnostic procedure done. Okay, so If somebody gets a false positive, then despite the knowledge that there are false positive rates, what happens is the person is railroaded into some kind of treatment that they don't need. Well, I assume that's what it means. I don't know what this article the heck it means because I assume that's what it means because they said the advantage is that you reduce the cost of follow-up diagnostic procedure. Okay, and you, you don't have, up, and you end up being maimed or radiated or burned right. They don't say for that. No reason, no reason at all. I guess so. I mean, that's what it means to me. If they do that. They get a positive. They go off, and it's much better than X-ray. They go off without doing a follow-up additional testing. So does that mean that they send them immediately off for treatment? That's what it must mean. That's so what it means to me, Dr. Carpenter. I mean, it's just an obvious, logical conclusion that if you get a false positive and they act on the false positive, you are railroaded into the system they- of standard treatment without even a second opinion or follow-up diagnostic. Well, that's what they say. There are a lot less follow-up by diagnostic. So that means that they're not going to do any other tests. They're not going to do biopsy. They're just immediately. So to me, that means that they're immediately jumping in uh, into excessive and extreme uh, procedure. Oh, okay. And then when do they find out that it was a false positive? After they have named the person? Late. After it's too late and the damage is done. I mean, people really keep uh, keep an eye on what is going on and pay attention on these things because they're going to happen without you even knowing. I, I just can't. Okay. I, I just can't. I can't believe the things that are going on. And these, keep in mind one thing, that information is a medscape. Only professional in the healing uh, field usually have access to it. Besides, people don't read anything because they say, oh, the doctor is an expert. If he tells me this must be true, that's a real problem. And that's what we are here for. No, that's not the case. Please don't fall into that trap because you're going to end up in a lot of trouble. And if you listen to all this nonsense, you're going to end up in a lot of trouble. Another thing they're saying, and I strongly disagree with it, but I just want to point it out. Your decision is what to do about it. You want to be a vegan, you want to be a vegetarian. I don't know. But what they are saying is the decline of brain function can be reduced if you have a restricted diet calorie restricted on any form of restricted diet. Okay? Now, it's a well-known fact that the Mediterranean diet, the real Mediterranean diet, not what people think is a Mediterranean diet. A Mediterranean diet is not just fish. A Mediterranean diet is not uh, no meat, it's not vegetarian. It's just a healthy diet eating just about everything but with healthy seasoning, with healthy Methods, but here I say no. A calorie restricted diet, it's really helping your brain. Really, let me tell you something the brain needs fat, good fat to maintain. So, what is this statement? Total garbage. They really, in my opinion, and let me tell you, this is just my opinion, but I've seen it in a lot of places. They push 
the restricted diet, vegan diet, vegetarian diet, because people will get sick. So they get more patients. That's my opinion. If you eat a healthy diet, you won't. And let me tell you, a lot of things in the in the Mediter- real Mediterranean cooking, there, ha- there are a lot of things that are really medicinal. They're just food, but they're medicinal. Of course, you know, can't deal with FDA on that one. Oh, if you are claiming medicinal, like artichokes, okay? Artichokes and olive oil are a way to fight uh, gallstone. Okay, if you say that, I guess FDA is going to jump in. Well, then artichoke and olive oil are drugs and you cannot... They'll have- break down your door for a jar of artichokes. Hey, <laughs> right. That's one of my favorite foods. I know, they're great. But you and- can't make a claim. You can't say it's healthy. Okay, That's- no. So people should point out the fraud involved on in that behavior of FDA. Because as I said, you get the Merriam-Webster Dictionary and it states the explanation of what is a drug. And in the statement of what is a drug, the Webster Dictionary say, according to FDA. I mean, this is it. According to FDA, it has to have this characteristic produce a reaction and change in the physiological function that's of the body, to, but to define but, drug, right, Dr. Parker? Yes, to define drug, and it's the definition comes from FDA, and the other point is, it cannot be food. Okay? It's in the definition, I said that before, in the definition of FDA, it cannot be food. Food cannot be classified as a drug. So why FDA goes around? Because they are helping the pharmaceutical company, that's why. Anyway, and we're going to get to it uh, when we get to the events of this week. But before I get to that, I wanted to point out, and I'll do it that later too, the nonsense of debate and research and discussion. People sit there, oh, I am an expert, I'm a doctor, so sit there and spend hours and hours being paid for it to do debates and discussion on the most insignificant detail. And this other one is, and it came on an article, and let me try to figure out where it's still brought up by by Medscape. Okay? Uh, The debate is on what terminology to use for cancer patient beyond treatment. Okay? What terminology are you going to use and how you establish the differences, okay? Are people that are still active after treatment, they still have active cancer? And get this, the phrase, the no-no phrase that nobody can use, they are introducing the word cure. People that have been cured. Okay. I have been attacked from all directions because I never said cure because... I didn't want to get into the discussion. What we said in our website is, now is cancer turn to die. Okay? And the chance of reoccurrences are very, very limited. Mm-hmm. Almost nil. They can occur if uh, you keep doing the things that cause the cancer in the first place, like taking the same medication, being exposed to the same toxic sources. Then it can happen again. But if you don't take the same medication and you stop whatever, like you maybe cause of, on your job, the, the toxic material you were exposed on your job, if you're still on that job, you might get other reoccurrences. But the source has to be still there. And it won't rehab. It won't happen that quickly either because it takes a long time for cancer to develop or redevelop. The reason why they say, oh, it came back. Or quickly, that's because they never really killed it. They used the wrong testing and never got the real results. But anyway, so what they're saying is the debate. Why should we call them? And they say, of course, up to now we have used the word cancer survivors. Okay? But they say, well, it's not that really a good phrase because they claim that reminds people of the Holocaust. Okay? What? What? Well, actually, I go along with that, okay? But it's, 
Well, what I'm saying, though, Dr. Carpenter, is this is obviously some kind of politically correct yes. mechanism yes. in order to to control the terminology yeah. that is used. I'll tell you this. When I first heard your commercial, and it was way before I ever met you, years before I ever met you, I heard your commercials on RBN. They were on there all the time. Now it's Cancer's Turn to Die. And I think you had Beethoven in the background, didn't you? Yes. Okay. So I was listening to these commercials, and I was very interested and intrigued by what I heard because I'd never heard any kind of commercial like that. It seemed revolutionary to me. Yeah, it is. But I was impressed. I was favorably impressed. And then when I met you, I was even more favorably impressed because you just stated it. You told it like it is. That's what you did. And they're objecting to that phrase, cancer's turn to die. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That one of the attacks was, um, you cannot say that. Well, cancer turn to die means it's about time we kill cancer. It doesn't even discuss the, the, the treatment. It all it says is, it's. It came from uh, uh, one of the uh, early rock and roll music. Uh, and now is Judy's turn to tra- cry. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. That was like out of the fifties or something. I don't know if it, I think it was the sixties because. Or 60s. Yeah, I remember uh, that. I remember that, Dr. Carpenter. Yeah, so that's why they came. And I thought. This involves freedom of speech. Anybody okay. has a right to say anything they want, okay? That is your right. They have no right to, you know, oppress you and stop you from speaking. But the stand was that the word cancer is own. Is own. Get this. A word is own by the American Cancer Society. And the American... That's true. Yeah, that's what they... Are you serious? Nobody can use... It's copyrighted, they say. That... Real Alternative Radio. We are oriontalkradio.com. You're listening to The Medical Conspiracy with Dr. Carpenter. Okay, we're back from the first break, and what what I was saying before the break was that, yes, uh, the claim is that the American Cancer Society owns a word in the dictionary, okay? Which is not much different from people that want to patent a gene, but we'll get to that one in a minute uh, later. But so they are opposing the word and they should talk about cured up to yesterday that was not allowed but now to their convenience is allowed because cancer survivor they said is too uh, you know too uh, of a traumatic phrase and it seems to uh, imply that cancer is a traumatic is traumatizing to people you want to bet it is not cancer it is what the hell is wrong with these people because they didn't go through the uh, cancer treatment, that's why. And the Holocaust? Well, let me say something, okay? That's where they developed chemo. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Chemo, original chemo comes, the first chemo agent, the worst one I ever put out, and some of the others come from mustard gas and comes from the research done in the uh, Nazi prisoner of war camps. So, obviously is like the Holocaust and is making people suffer and then in the end kills them and is taking away all their money which is what they were doing if they could get access to it but a lot of uh, of them they moved their money to the Swiss banks and that's how the Swiss bank became so successful. They didn't become successful because they were doing something better than other banks. They became successful because they got all 
this money deposited in their account and then a lot of people that deposited money ended up killed in, in the Nazi camp and so they kept the money. The bank had kept the money. That's why it became so successful. That's another story. Instead of the Nazi getting all of the money, the Swiss did. Okay? Anyway, and then they didn't make, as you know, they didn't make any effort to find uh, the owners of those uh, accounts, the relatives of the owners of those accounts. And, of course, only a couple of years ago, they were a court decision that the Nazi, they had to give back the money to the descendants. But anyway, so... So the connection with Holocaust is perfectly justified because it is. It is connected with the behavior during the Holocaust. Well, you know what, Dr. Carpenter? After your explanation, I now understand that. Because in in my own situation, you know that CIA was originally formed by Nazi scientists in 1947. They brought over here under Project Paperclip. So it's it's the same. Actually, when you think about it, it's the same group of people in the government. Yeah, still controlling things, and and I do understand now. After your explanation, before I didn't understand what the problem was with the connection with the Holocaust, but I do now. Yeah, and they say, oh no, we don't want to connect it with the Holocaust, whether you want it or not. It is. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, but then in the end, they said, "Well, for now, we're still going to keep the word cancer survivor because that's uh, um, that's what is the accepted phrase." And we oppose that phrase because we are talking about mere survival versus quality of life. Well, you better believe it is because when you get standard treatment, you all you have is mere survival. You don't have quality of life. None at all. Yeah, also, Dr. Carpenter, there's another phrase, and I wonder I wonder about this phrase, if it's used anymore. Actually, I heard somebody use it the other day. A friend of mine use it. And he said, so-and-so has terminal cancer. Are they allowed to use that phrase anymore? Oh, yeah, they use it all the time. Yes. Terminal cancer, so they can use that. Instead of saying, we are incompetent, and incapable of stopping cancer. And what we do actually make it worse, they call it terminal cancer. So they make cancer the villain, not right. the treatments. That's In what words, they... They blame the cancer. They right. don't blame the treatment for killing people, which I know it does. And well, then we got all these, these new virulent strains... Oh, of cancer that they cannot stop because it's all the manipulating things manipulating the language new virulent strains of cancer a virulent is used to be used for viruses okay or bacteria okay because they're very strong very powerful the cancer is none of that oh this cancer it's uh very fast growing we have to jump in and do something about it well you know what the treatment made it fast growing Cancer. Yeah, and they call it aggressive. It's an aggressive, it's a very aggressive cancer. Aggressive. Oh, yeah, very aggressive cancer. So we have to jump on it immediately. And, you know, I think that you all have heard uh, when uh, we had the radio show and we had a guest that used the name Daniel. Uh, that's not his real name, so he couldn't be traced, but he used the, the name Daniel. Well, he was labeled... <laughs> with a very aggressive testicular cancer, okay? So, very aggressive. So, you know what would have happened to him, okay? Castration is called, okay? Mm, Yeah. Mm. Well, you know, the Daniel case was, okay? And then he came, some alternative practitioner, because it was a growing cancer and their methods would not work and they never work anyway but he sent it to us and today and, and after the treatment he was sore he was in pain because of the uh, delicate location and he had a, uh, a very violent healing reaction just that fast see the the elimination of the dead tissue was very quick. I, uh, usually it doesn't happen that way. In his case, it was very quick. And, yeah, he was uncomfortable, but he got uh, 
free of the lumps pretty quickly. So but that's the whole point, Dr. Carpenter, that I think many people um, who, who even look into this do not understand. And I'm sure the listeners to this program, unless they're new listeners, they need to understand that your treatment is unique in the sense that it actually does kill. It eliminates the cancer and it's gone. It's just not, it's not there. It may take some time for the body to flush out the dead tissue, but it is gone and it does no harm. It does no harm. It just, you have to be patient, okay? You have to be patient and make sure that you wait the time that it takes for the dead, for the body to flush out the dead tissue. And it's usually very slow and it takes at least a couple of years. And that is something that is written everywhere in the in scientific paper and in, 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 in books. If you have a case of coagulation necrosis, which is the damage done to the irreversible damage done to the cell by heat, okay, then the healing process that transform the cell from the early stage of necrosis into liquefaction and so can be eliminated through the lymphatic system that can it usually takes years and i cannot change that that is what the body does that's now, what the body does naturally as part of the healing process right and, people, and you make that crystal clear in the literature and in the discussions with the patients and you i used to have Every single day of treatment, no matter how many days of treatment the patient had, every single day I discussed that subject. You'll have a month of just no, nothing, dead. Uh, you don't feel anything like it wasn't there. And then the swelling comes, and that's part of the healing process and elimination of the dead tissue. That is normal. That's what happens. It doesn't mean the cancer is grown. The area will be hot, swollen, and it will be sore, throbbing pain. And every single that day, that's natural, Doctor Carpenter, for many types of injuries. Right. It gets, it gets. It appears to get worse. It's part of the healing process. It reaches a healing crisis, and then it starts to heal on its own. But because you know what that is caused by, by the blood that rushes there, the blood white count contains a monocyte that are the cleaners. The cleaners eliminate the damaged tissue and the healthy tissue gets replaced. You know, it's replaced by healthy tissue. And it's a very slow process, so not to overload the lymphatic system, okay? Not to overload the lymph nodes. That's why yeah, this body knows what it's doing. It right. has there's innate intelligence in the body, and it knows what it's doing. If people would just leave things alone, it just have, wait. It's, it's not going to do them any harm. It's not going to do anything. Right. And you know, these stupid alternatives. Some of the stupid alternative practitioners say, "Oh, you have to boost the immune system." Sp I know how to speed up the healing, and you end up clogging the lymph nodes. Really stupid. Okay, I had one that was had cancer. I treated her. She was a naturopathic doctor. She wouldn't listen to me because she thought she knew what she was. Oh, I know how to speed it up. So what did she do? She sped up the elimination of the dead tissue from the breast. It all ended up stuck in the lymph node that she had the most unbelievable. And then the lymph node burst. And she had the most unbelievable. And she wouldn't listen to me that the cancer wasn't growing. It was just what she did. So, you know, it, it's a choice. People have a choice either to listen or you, cho you chose this treatment. Uh, listen. No. A lot never did. And, and, and Dr. That, Carpenter, the, the ones that didn't listen, it, for whatever reason or, or whatever, however they chose to, to proceed in their, own, in their own taking part in their own treatment, the, the, the point is this, I have to keep saying this, that you have designed a whole system <clears throat> of protocols that goes with the treatment. It's extremely important for the person to listen, not only to listen, but to understand and then to follow the procedures that are advised by you. Otherwise, they're not doing their part in their own treatment, and that causes the problem. It causes the problem also the, uh, the problem is the dishonesty of the medical establishment, the fear factor that they put in. Okay? I have a patient that came three years ago. He had gone, uh, he had squamous cell carcinoma. Okay? No big deal. 
he went to Mexico. Of course, they did surgery. He had surgery a couple of times because he had reoccurrences, and then they wanted to do all sorts of nonsense, okay? Well, what happened the third time? At the third time, he felt he had about enough, okay? Decided not to go back to Mexico and uh, look on the web, found us, and came to see us three years ago, okay? The reoccurrence this time was on the eyelid. It was no longer on the forehead, it was on the eyelid, okay? Which made him, put him in a very bad spot because seeing any doctor, they said, well, we have to do surgery and remove your eye. Okay? Remove his eye. Yeah. And a part of the, uh, uh, the upper part of the nose, the septus, okay? Uh, unbelievable. Okay, we're talking about major disfiguration, major disaster. Well, he came to see me. I treated him. And, of course, being on the high lid, the, the healing process was weird. He was swelling up. He was looking bad or already irritated, and he was worried about it. But he had the brain to call me, not an oncologist. <laughs> so what happened, <coughs> he waited. I uh, told him what I told him to do, which is nothing other than taking some enzyme and maybe taking some curcumin to control the swelling and just be patient and wait. The problem is that the during the healing process, the eyelid uh, on the corner w- between the eye and the nose was not closing up. I mean, it was a healing process, but that part was open, cracked open, Okay. So he had too much light getting into his eye, and it was hurting him. And I said, okay, what you need is somebody that put a couple of stitches there and allow to heal it properly. That's all you need. But the problem is you're not going to find it. A doctor will agree to do it because they're going to tell you you have cancer, so the stitches will not work. Well, sure enough, he went to see a doctor, and he said, oh, no, no, you have cancer. There's no point of stitching anything. And I can see it. You're just full of cancer. It's so obvious. I can look at it and see it. He could look at it and see it without doing any testing, okay? So he found an alternative practitioner in a godforsaken place. Not godforsaken, but just out in the boonies. You know, like the old doctors used to be? The doctors yeah. that were... Yeah country practitioner used to be yes i guess there are some very few left mm-hmm. uh they're older people uh and he did the stitching and the guy healed and he's fine okay now if he had panicked listened to the guy that said oh no 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 stitching is full of cancer he would have lost his eye and part of his nose think about it and there was no need for it he was fine he's fine this is what people this is what people <clears throat> need to learn. And and I think it's very difficult when you when you're I know. Sorting, sorting through everything that's out there, including these so called alternative practitioners, it's very difficult to actually get to the truth. I know. It and is. that's why we're here on this program, Doctor Carpenter. Uh, we want people to know the truth. We know we want people to know that there is something that works. And unfortunately, I cannot do it. Even you out of your practice at this point, the FDA has destroyed your business and your practice. Financially, this financial destruction. Okay. And it's still at it, by the way. FDA is doing it to other people nonstop, no control, nothing, nothing. They're still doing it. They're depriving the public from the real solution. They're putting them in danger with these awful drugs. And they don't care because that's the money they get. It doesn't matter how people suffer. It doesn't matter that they die. It doesn't matter that they can't work anymore, even if they survive. That's why they're called cancer survivors, because they're no longer what they used to be. They're just, they're just like barely scraping by physically and emotionally and mentally and financially. And financially. And financially. And again, we should bring up a complete lie, an outrageous lie that the FDA is there, quote, to protect the public health and safety. Nonsense. It's not. 
It's just unbelievable. Okay? Okay? It just... And it's all a financial... Last week I mentioned the fact... A financial issue. That last week I mentioned the fact that uh, uh, the Wall Street Journal was doing uh, certain articles. And one of the ones I didn't get to discuss the detail was the they were saying we should have asked the amount of money physicians charge to Medicare and Medicaid for their services. We should have access and view those because they can easily found who is defrauding the country. Because it's not defrauding the government, it's the country. Okay? Ah, taxpayers. So, uh, there has been a real battle from the medical establishment because they don't want that to happen. And then there has been a court case, and I believe it's in... And... Uh, what happened was that they, um, the judge agreed that they should have access. Although the access is still quite difficult, but they should have access. And of course, if they wanna, uh, they wanna put an end to that. So they wanna counter sue and they try to put a stop to that because they feel that people should know that's privacy of doctors. What do you mean? It's privacy of doctors. They, they came and took everything from us, including, get this, things that were on the court board for uh, suppliers of different products we need. It was like uh, hemostatic bandages or uh, things you use to, other uh, products you use to stop bleeding or... Uh, but, uh, yeah, not so they had no concern whatsoever for your privacy, no. nothing, nothing. But these doctors who are in the system, oh, their privacy is really important. Right. So we nobody can find out that ripping off the public. So they're saying this is, should be, has been since a, a decree since 1976, I believe they said, that, that you cannot have access to what they charge. Excuse me? You should. Why not? Because they tell you one thing and they charge another. So, I mean, come on, that affects everybody, not just a person. Affects well, the yes, it does, Dr. Carpenter. And we're talking about the one case in in the state of Florida. So that was in a was that in a state court? It was a state issue, not a federal issue. Is that no, it wasn't a federal court. Oh, it because, wasn't a federal court. Yeah, because it involved the Wall Street Journal, so it had to be in a federal court. But it doesn't matter, okay? Because uh, once one state starts, and then others will, but they want to put an end to it right off. So people won't have any access to anything. See? That's the point. They can't even know the facts. Right. It's, it's a fact that that should be known. It should be disclosed. And are they going to find out if somebody charged a procedure that they actually did not do? And that happens all the time, let me tell you. Well, yes, we talked about that on one of the other shows, how they quoted a price like $350 for the <laughs> surgery, and then an $11,000 bill comes in the mail. Well, how dare you? I know. I just unbelievable. And I did do that. I, and, and then they oppose because they want to be... It's racketeering. The medical is racketeering, and they don't want anybody scrutinizing what they do. They don't want it. it. It absolutely is true, Dr. Popper. It's a mob operation. It's gangsters. Yeah. I think that we're getting close to the end of the first hour of the show. And Actually, uh, we got about 30 seconds. Right. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to uh, let them know that we might even be cut off, but at least they're prepared. We are hitting the end of the first hour, and then we'll discuss. And what I want to discuss... The problem of shortage of drugs, okay, and how they think it should be handled, like is the new discovery. Touch that mouse, the medical conspiracy will return in just a moment. 